In today's video, we're going to quickly create this sort of an animation where on one side of the coin, we have some very minimalistic vector style scenery of maybe a night scene. And on the other side, we have a daytime scene. We're going to try to keep it super simple. So it's not going to be too customizable, but it'll be really simple so that even a beginner can follow along. With that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube. Then we're going to create all of these using basic curved circles so that we can control the resolution on the fly. So let's press Shift A and just search for a Bezier circle. So we can directly type in circle and just choose the curved circle. Then in our actual curve properties down here, we can increase the resolution in case you think that this gives you jagged edges. So if you actually look into it, you can see how we can see each of these edges. So if you don't want to be able to see those, you can just increase the resolution and that makes it nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and now give this an actual face. To give this a face, all we have to do is switch this over to 2D and then change the fill mode from none to both. And that way we get this sort of a face present. Now we can give this its own material. So let's go over to the material properties and then just choose the default material. To keep this organized, it'll be nice if we label everything properly. So I'll rename this Bezier circle from Bezier circle to maybe night background and the material will get the same name as well. Now to see the changes to the material, we'll switch our viewport chaining over to render and in my render properties, I'll just switch on bloom and in my world properties, I'll change this background to a complete bright white after which I'll select the light and delete it. Now, since this is my night background, I'm just going to go ahead and play around with the material. So let's select it, bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this to the shader editor. Now I'll tap end to remove that side panel after which I can zoom in and start playing around with the principal PSDF. The base color itself has to be some sort of gradient for night colors. So I'll go from maybe a dark pink to a dark purple. For that, I have to search for a gradient node. And of course, since I want this gradient to be spherical, I'll have to change this from linear to spherical. And if I currently use this, it's going to be from the corner of the object. Let's just control shift click it with the node wrangler enabled to preview the node. And you can clearly see it's coming from some corner. So it's not what we want. To fix that, just press Ctrl T with the node wrangler enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. We can switch from generated to object and now it should be coming right from the center. Let's choose the different colors by using a color ramp. So again, just search for a color ramp node, plug that in right here and we'll go ahead and change this white color to maybe a dark pink. So let's make it completely pink but then just reduce this down just like that. And this one can be maybe a purplish color. So again, it has to be dark. So I'll keep it fairly dark, but I'll change it towards the purplish bluish hues. And I think that's good enough. Next, I'm going to plug this into the base color of the principled PSDF and I'll control shift click it to actually see what we have. Now there's a lot of reflection from the world background. So to prevent that, all I'm going to do is make the metallic all the way to one and the roughness also all the way to one or all the way to zero. But if you do make it zero, when you look at it from side angles, there will be a lot of reflections. But if you keep the roughness up, those reflections will not be there. But again, once you make these changes, you might have to play around with the actual colors and maybe just brighten them up by a little bit. Next, I want to create some sort of mountains and I want to do that with one single plane. So I'll press Shift A and search for a plane. And again, just to move it above this circle, I'll press GZ and move it up by just a tiny bit, maybe 0.01 itself. Then I'll go back to my top view and I'll scale it down and start messing around with it. To create these mountains, I'll just press tab to go into edit mode. And if you have the pie menu enabled, you can just select edit, after which you can select each of these vertices and move them around so that the base of the mountains go outside the circle and the peaks come within the circle. If you want to create a second peak, you can just press Control R to create one loop cut and then go ahead and play with this particular point that you just created. So let's maybe bring that down here, Control R to create one more loop cut, then select this, G, bring it up. And as long as you have pressed seven on your numpad to go into your top view, whenever you move these, they won't move up and down on the Z axis. And it's always best that we don't move it up and down on the Z axis when we're creating vector style animations. Although based on your preference and your lighting, you could also use that to your advantage. By moving it up on the Z, you'll see you get this sort of a slope on this region, which you might be able to use to your advantage. So for example, if you take this and press GZ and move this one down, you have this slope actually coming up. In object mode, you can actually see what it's doing. If you had some light in the scene with the background a bit darker, you'd be able to get these nice shadows, which might be exactly what you want. And actually, I hadn't done this before, but I'm actually liking this. So I'll keep it just like this. Now I'll press seven to go back into my top view and I'll go ahead and just finish this off. So select it, go back into edit mode and start moving these 
around just by pressing G and then moving them around just like that. So maybe this last one I'll place here so that I can press Ctrl R and add in a few more loop cuts to just allow me to create a few more peaks. Again, you can just press GZ to lift it up so that you get some nice shadows formed as well. If you don't have enough points for this, just add in another loop cut and then maybe drag that down to just make sure that they're all pulled out beneath the actual circle. Now, if you press tab and go back into object mode, this is what you've created. Let's go ahead and give this some color by going to the material properties or right here, you can scroll and press the new button. Now, I again want these to be a very dark purplish color. So let's just make it dark and purple. And I'm actually going to increase the roughness quite a bit. So I think that looks good. I now have my mountains. Let's create some sort of stars for the night. Apart from that, I also feel like this background is a bit too dark. So let's just lift this up as well. And that seems nice. Before I add in the stars, I want to add in a moon. So let's press shift a and then search for another mesh circle or you can just select this night background itself and press shift d to duplicate now since the moon has to be above this background i'll just press gz to lift it up by a little bit maybe this can go by 0 0.001 and then i'll scale it down to make it much smaller now in the top view even if you are seeing some sort of shading issues let it be as is for now because they might get fixed when you fix all of your camera properties and things like that so for now we'll leave it just like this and i'll change the name from night background to maybe night moon and for the material so let's first press this duplicate button to make it night bg001 and then rename it to night moon and then remove the connection for night moon next i actually want this to be emissive so i'll expand the emission and change this to a white color and increase the strength to maybe two then i'll scale this down by quite a bit and i think that's good enough now as you see those lines are still present let's actually select my camera and set it up to see if those lines disappear to set up the camera i'll press alt g with it selected so that the location is cleared then i'll press alt r to clear its rotation then i'll press gz to just lift it up on the z axis and then i'll press zero to go into my camera view once i have it placed appropriately i'll actually change this type from perspective to orthographic and then i'll play around with this orthographic scale to help zoom in and out once you're happy with the location of the moon and all of the shading issues are gone you can go ahead and create some duplicates to create a nice aura around the moon of course we are getting that from the bloom but since you can do it manually as well there seems to be no reason to not do so for that let's go ahead and just select it press shift d to duplicate it then press tab to go into edit mode and then switch on overlay so that you can see what you're working with and with it just press shift d so that you now have another set of points present on top of the first ones then you can press s and just scale it up maybe we'll go with the value of 1.1 and then press tab object mode now you see you actually get a ring around the original moon so let's go to the material properties and press this duplicate button to create its own material and for this i'm actually going to change this alpha down to maybe 0.1 now for the alpha to actually become 0.1 you have to go all the way down to the settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend now you can actually keep this even lower than 0.1 let's go with 0.05 and that looks great let's go ahead and create another version of this by just pressing shift D to duplicate, tab to go into edit mode, then these nodes itself, I'll just press S and scale it up and then back to object mode. So I think that looks pretty cool. Again, it's up to you as to what you think suits best for your particular scene. Now, I don't want this night moon to be present right at the center so i'm actually going to give it a slight offset towards the left for that i'll select all of these circles that we have created and then press g x and then just move it over to the side just like that. Maybe I can bring it down as well by pressing G Y. And that seems like more of a sunrise location. So maybe this is where I'll place it. But remember, if I do place this here, technically the brightest part of the sky should also be there. So again, with that night background selected in my mapping node, I can just move it around on the X so that we get the gradient to be created from that position. So just move it along the X and the Y and you'll have the brightest part right there. Of course, that's artistic freedom. You can always keep it right at the center. It's completely up to you. Now let's create some stars. So for that, I'm just gonna duplicate this background again. So let's press Shift D to duplicate it. Again, the stars have to be in front of this plane, but beneath the moon. So I can actually select all of the moon related curves and press GZ to just lift it up by a little bit more. And then I can select my new night background and press GZ to lift it up. Now I'll press seven to go back to my camera view and this night background, I'll change it to night stars and I'll give it a new material by just pressing this duplicate button and calling it night stars. Now I don't want this gradient texture. Instead, I want a Voronoi texture. So let's select it and press X to delete it and then press shift a and search for a Voronoi texture. Let's plug this vector back in right here and this position into the color ramp. I also want this color ramp to go back to how it was. So I'll select it and press the backspace to clear it completely. Now I want to take the distance outputs and convert them into small circular stars. So I'll change the scale up to maybe something like 100 and I'll bring this black in all the way to there and I'll switch this white over maybe bring the black back like that and now that's giving me stars I think these stars are a bit too small 
So I'll change the scale to maybe 25 and that looks good. Now I don't want there to be any stars present just around the moon. So I'll press shift A and search for a gradient texture and I'll go ahead and plug this mapping into the gradient and the output of the gradient into a color ramp. So let's duplicate this color ramp, plug this in right here. Control shift click to see what the gradient looks like. Of course, this isn't the gradient that we want. Let's change this to spherical bring this back in change this from linear to ease and then you can just start increasing the black till it becomes approximately the size of the moon and then move it around by playing around with the location so that it is perfectly behind the moon now i'm going to be multiplying these two values so that stars that are nearby the moon will get this black value multiplied to it so they will become much dimmer in fact i'll just bring this in a little bit more and that should be fine. Let's press shift A and search for a math node, plug that in and change it from add to multiply. Multiply these two colors and then control shift click it to see what we have. That looks perfectly all right. So I think I can now use this value to also go into the alpha socket of this principal PSDF. Again, for the alpha to actually show up, I'll change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend and I'll plug this value into the alpha. Now let's control shift click the principal PSDF and this is what we have, that's great. But obviously stars should be bright. So we have to plug that into the emission. So instead of plugging it into the base color, we can plug it into the emission color and we can increase the strength to maybe five to give them some nice bloom. Now there are regions where it's coming above my mountain plane. So let's select the mountains, just press GZ, lift it up a bit and that should be fine. Now we need some sort of border which will actually hide this mountain range as well. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate the background that we had. So right over here, we'll press shift D to duplicate it. And we'll do exactly what we did for creating the rings of the moon. We'll press tab to go into edit mode. We'll press shift D to duplicate them. And then we'll press S to just scale them up. And then again, we'll press tab to go into object mode and give it a different color. So let's duplicate the material, get rid of the color ramp, and we'll change the base color to maybe a purplish color, but fairly light. Apart from that, I don't actually want these mountains to be creating shadows on any of these. So let's change the shadow mode to none and that looks much better the light should also be coming from where the moon is so let's shift the light over towards that side and although i think that looks better for the realism i like the shadows on the different mountains on this side as well so i think that was good but i'll leave it over here itself for now next with this selected i'll press g followed by z to lift it up so that it covers out the edges of the mountain and that should be good enough next i want to parent all of these to one specific empty so i'll add in the empty by pressing shift a and searching for an empty plane axis i'll scale that up quite a bit and I'll select everything together and then lastly shift select the empty once again and press ctrl p and choose set parent to object. So now even in my camera view if I select the empty and just rotate it on the y axis you should be able to see everything rotate just like that which is exactly what we wanted. Now when we rotate it over to the other side we don't want any of these to be seen. So to make sure that all of these become transparent we can go ahead and just select each material and down in the material properties we can switch on back face culling. So now you'll see when the empty is rotated about y axis by 90 degrees or 180 degrees, the object should no longer be seen. So for example, this object has back face culling switched on now and it disappears. For the mountains as well, let's select it, switch on back face culling and it's gone. We can do the same thing for the moon, switch on back face culling and it's gone. So once you've done that for all the objects, they should just disappear when they turn to the other side. With the empty, you can always rotate it on the y axis by 180 and it'll be back. Let's go ahead and keyframe the animation for the empty. So we'll expand the timeline and we'll go to our output properties to set our animation defaults. We'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second end frame can be 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video with the encoding container changed to MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Now on frame zero, I'll go ahead and select the empty and tap I and choose location or rotation. And then on frame 150, I'll press R, Y followed by 180 or actually I'll go with 360 and I'll tap I, rotation. And down here, I'll press T, linear so that we get a linear loop of this thing rotating all the way around. Now, the thing is that when it rotates to the other side, we have to create another variation. So on frame 75, you can actually press shift A and add in yet another curved circle and do the exact same setup all over again. But make sure that they're all rotated so that they face the camera when they're on this side. Side. then you can parent them to the empty and you'll get the entire animation. Of course, during the rotation, there's going to be some sort of discrepancies like this region over here. To fix all of those up, 
maybe you can add in yet another Bezier circle and just extrude that quite a bit. So let's actually select this Bezier circle. We'll press Shift D to duplicate it. And just like the moon, we'll press tab to go into edit mode. We'll press S 1.1 and maybe the inner rings as well. We can select all of them and scale them up by 1.1 as well. And then go back to object mode. Maybe press Alt G to clear its location because this has to be present right at the center. Then in the actual curve properties, you can expand geometry and increase the extrusion just so that it covers everything up. Now in your camera view, it's going to look flat when it's just like this. But of course, when you actually rotate it, you can actually see the thickness and it'll cover everything up just like that. Although you do see these faces of the mountains, it won't be an issue once it turns over to the other side because there will be some plane over here that'll cover those up as well. So that's actually all there is to creating this animation and you can create variations of this fairly easily. I feel like the tutorial has already become fairly long, so I'm not going to show you how I created the other side. However, if you do want me to create a video on how I created the other side, let me know and I'll create a separate video on that as well. If you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and render animation. I hope this was a fun one for everyone and it was actually simple to follow along. If you liked it, check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and there's definitely something or the other just waiting for you to discover. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating. Don't forget to stay creative.